What is up, Knicks fans? Welcome back to yet another episode of Fireside Knicks with your hosts, Dylan and Davin, as usual. And today, we're going to talk about the Knicks' last two games, the back-to-back. You know, they won a great game against the Philadelphia 76ers, but then suffered a heartbreaking, I mean, just absolutely gut-wrenching loss to the Chicago Bulls last night at Madison Square Garden. Now they have today off before they take on the Brooklyn Nets on Friday, and then have another back-to-back over the weekend with the Nets again on Sunday and then the Washington Wizards Monday. It is a jam impact week and we're going to talk about the need for them to find some consistency this team is five and six of the first 11 games it is still early in the season but you feel like that they're missing something a little bit you feel like they haven't been as consistent as they should be because one night they look really good the next night not so much so we're going to talk about that so Davin first off tell me how you're doing and secondly what were some of your biggest takeaways from this back-to-back that they just had doing great as always man thank you for asking And to be quite honest, like you said, there has to be something figured out. There's such a polarity between the two games. That's the thing about the New York Knicks, five and six after 11 games. We see it where these guys don't have, like I said, a level of consistency at all. And it's like, oh, against the Philadelphia 76ers, you hold them below 100 points. Everyone's looking contained. Everyone's looking composed. Everyone's looking like it's cohesion being shown. Everything's looking in order. Then all of a sudden, you see that L to the Bulls, and it was like just derailment at that point. Everyone's just off the off the wires, man. It was insane. So that's really what I was about. Consistency, and I think biggest consistency starts with Jalen Brunson. And if we really, you know, hold him to that standard, he should be held to. Uh, Brunson's looked mediocre, man. 23 points on 44% over the last six games. And he's not being held to the certain standards that we expect. Of course, he holds himself to those standards. But we're going to continue to hound and talk about you know, the expectations of Jalen Brunson because he is not he's not looked all right. During the comeback yesterday against the Chicago Bulls, for example, he wasn't on the floor until until late in the fourth quarter when it was time to, you know, say crunch time, go get a big shot. And at that point, you're going to be playing hero ball when he's been calling the town to carrying for the whole last 30 minutes. So I don't know. You know, it's very interesting with Jalen Brunson right now. But like I said, we want to hold him. This is a former All-NBA player, the fifth in MVP voting last season. So there's, there's a certain expectation we have with Jalen Brunson right now. You just wouldn't expect it to take this long for him to figure it all out. You know what I mean? So everything's down across the board. Field goal percentage, three-point percentage, points per game. Everything's down right now. It's like we're going to accommodate, you know, bringing in town. But at the same time, it's, at the same time, you can still find your own groove. And yesterday was really Cameron Payne. That was a spark plug yesterday for the New York Knicks off the bench. And it was like the whole, his energy, the two steals in the fourth quarter. The conversions they were doing in transition, it was ridiculous. He had, he pulled a three in transition that kind of set the tone in that late in the third quarter. They were like, okay, this guy, this guy's ready to go, and he's going to make a comeback here. And it just kind of just went up, well, downhill, per se, <laughs> by the end of the game there. But, yeah, it's been phenomenal, really, to uh, see these guys. But outside of Jalen Brunson, I mean, come on, let's be serious, man. That's that's the one piece that I think when he gets it together, we'll have no questions about the New York Knicks. And that's really it's all about. He's the head of the snake, and if he's not living or playing up to standard, then, man, it's just we're going to follow that. That's the way the New York Knicks work right now. Yeah, like you just said, if Brunson isn't going, then the rest of the team isn't going to be going. And, you know, quite frankly, Carl Anthony Towns has been phenomenal this season. I mean, last night against Chicago, 46 points, 10 rebounds, basically carried the Knicks all the way through and almost vaulted them into that crazy comeback. I mean, they were down by 22 at one point in the game. And I think that's really my biggest concern, though, is the lack of consistency. Because, you know, against Philadelphia, they played a close game throughout and then finally had that, like, electric fourth quarter that we were looking for, right? They finally had a fourth quarter where they, you know, stood their ground and they played that their brand of basketball. But then last night against the Bulls, you know, going down by 22 in the first place is unacceptable. I mean, you can't exactly, there's no justifying that whatsoever. I mean, throughout the first three and a half quarters or so, they were basically just tired, lackluster. They looked like they were just settling for shots, lots of one and done possessions, lots of just really just bad defense all around too because they couldn't keep up with the Bulls really fast pace. I mean, those guys were annoying me, man. I'm going to be honest with you. Those guys, like the moment you look up, those guys are already in the half court set. So that that that, that is insane. And I, I can see why the Bulls have a, you know, a high powered offense when they're playing at a pace that fast. Zach Levine was just giving Mikhail Bridges bucket after bucket, which that's another concern that we're going to get into as well. But the main thing really is just I want to see them kind of, you know, play their brand of basketball on a more consistent basis. I'm kind of getting sick of this one game they look great and the next game they don't. I mean, it's quite literally been one one win, one loss, one win, one loss over the past couple weeks. It's it's kind of getting ridiculous now at this point. I just want to see them be more consistent. I understand this is a brand new team and they're still building chemistry together. You know, a lot of these guys are still trying to figure their roles out on the court. It's not perfect right now at all by any any stretch of imagination. But... You really wanted to see them pull away with the win last night. 
You really did. Because not only for the matchup sake, I mean, you're playing a Bulls team that isn't really all that good, let's just be honest, and they were missing Lonzo Ball in that as well. So you really felt like you should have won that in the first place. But to make a 22-point comeback, just for it to all go away because of yet another defensive miscue in the final seconds, Josh Hart going you know underneath the screen and then fouling Kobe White from behind? Why? Like, why are we doing that? It's... I, that, that kind of play really upset me because you pretty much just robbed any chance of winning that game. And yeah, I know Jalen Brunson's shot to win the game literally went halfway down and out, so you could have gotten bailed right there if the laws of physics just worked better in our case, but they did not, right? But that's not we can't point at that missed shot as why they lost the game. We can point at, you know... The defensive problems is why they missed the game, why they lost the game, excuse me. Why they, you know, the fact they went tw down 22 in the first place, the fact they gave up 124 points to the Bulls, you know, another game of which they've given up 120 points to their opponents. Their defensive rating is 19th in the league and their offensive rating is 4th. You know, you have the offense going, but where's the defense? And it's kind of stunning that the defense is like this right now, considering that you acquired Mikael Bridges to match him up, you know, with OG and Obi on the perimeter. You have those two guys together, and the defense looks terrible. I'm just being honest. It looks terrible. And it's kind of alarming right now. I understand we're only 11 games in. We still have time to figure it out. I know this Knicks team is going to figure it out because they are just simply too talented. Someone in, in my Twitter comments yesterday said that this could possibly be you know, a repeat of the 2021-2022 season. I don't think so because this team is way more talented than that team ever was. So... This team will figure itself out. You know, you have a bunch of great players on this team. You're gonna, they'll, they'll figure it out. Okay, I'm not worried about them long term. I do think they're gonna get rolling. They'll get the ball rolling. They'll start playing more consistently. But I, I just want to know when they're gonna play more consistent. I want to know if it's gonna be uh, tomorrow night against Brooklyn, or if it's gonna, you know, if if I see a better outing there, and then it, more of the same on Sunday when they play them again. Or if it's just going to be right back to what we've been dealing with all season, where it's one game they look great, the next game they don't. I, it's it's kind of alarming that one game they'll look you know very cohesive they look like they're getting the ball moving everyone's doing their part everyone's scoring at a high level and then the next game you know they're turning the ball over a lot and then they're you know making wrong reads making bad decisions playing poor defense again it's alarming and I think it's reasonable to be concerned about it right now I don't think it's reasonable to panic I don't think the Knicks are necessarily in trouble the Eastern Conference has been very Weird this season, you know, it's been competitive on, this, on the notion that a lot of teams are actually under 500 right now. The Knicks are actually fourth in the Eastern Conference despite being five and six. So I do think that's kind of ironic. But regardless, I just want to see them play better because we know this team can play better than this. We know that they are way better than what their record says right now. We know that. That's all I want to see. I just want to see more consistency. And I think, I think you could agree with me on that. I want to get your, get your thoughts on that, though, because there's a lot that I could dive into. Oh, absolutely. So you said you wanted to see more consistency, consistency, and I think the most consistent player has been Carl Anthony Towns, and that's who I think we should be following at this point in time. I understand Jalen Brunson is the captain. I understand he has to get his shots off. I don't agree with him, you know, taking some certain shots coming in late into the game in the fourth quarter. Today, I think Towns should just continue, you know, the barrage he was on. But at the same time, yesterday he works in beat, and Towns became the first player, I mean, yesterday against the Sixers he worked in beat, first player to average 20 and 10 on 50% in the first 10 games of the franchise. Carl Anthony Towns is playing superb. He's averaging, I believe, 32 and 11 right now. Yeah, 32 and 11 right now you know, over the past five games. He's going he's going berserk right now. He's the guy that I think we should be getting behind. I understand, like I said, Jalen Brunson, it's all about consistency. He has not been consistent. It just is what it is. And he's just not playing up to the level that we expect him to be. So him taking a step back this season, and that, that was kind of anticipated. You didn't anticipate him to go out and average, you know, 30 points a game this year. Maybe you did because of the, you know, the talent they have. You know, him being the number one guy should be easier for him to get his shot off. But defenses are kind of, you know, they're kind of, you know, playing against that. They're really working against Brunson, making sure he's making it harder for him to get to his spots, really working and, and pounding down on Brunson. And right now, Carl Anthony Towns can go get his shots and do anything he wants to do. So, hey, let this guy cook. Let this guy cook. And I think that's going to be the key to winning here because that held to the Bulls, which is, like I said, beyond consistency. It's like shot distribution with these guys. We see Mikael Bridges goes. He gets 20 yesterday. That was, that was a nice game for Mikael Bridges. OG Anobi, he goes cold, not shooting well from three. Jalen Brunson, he's going cold. So these guys both took over, like, you know, 15 shots, and it's like, well, you know, we could be doing towns, that we could be doing bridges, that somebody has to take that when you're hot, give it to the hot hand. That's really how I believe. So I don't believe trying to, you know, service everyone just because they are who they are is with the key to winning. You should just win whoever is going on going hot and that should be who's winning for you. So just my opinion on the whole entire thing. But that's like you say, consistency is all it's about. 
catching me the guy. But he said yesterday, he said, no win attached, so it's a bad night. And that's the kind of thing that sounds has really been growing on Knicks fans, is in his service to what they to what they want to see as far as winning goes, as well as the way he poises, his poise, the way he carries himself. Call of the Town has been phenomenal. And that's all I can say about that, to be honest with you, as far as consistency goes. The hell to the Bulls was ridiculous. Heartbreaking is the word to say. And the fact, the fact that it played out the way it did, it even had to get there against the Chicago Bulls, lets you know, like, this Brooklyn Nets team that we have coming up, that's a matchup to look forward to. At the same time, you know, can you string together two wins? Can you string together, you know, successful possessions? Can you string together scoring over and over, you know, in possessions again? And that's something that Clyde was actually talking about on the broadcast a lot last night. He's like, oh, well, they're not they're not scoring and string together possessions. These guys cannot maintain an offensive rhythm or chemistry at all. Just It's impossible. So that's the way things are looking yesterday. But I'm looking forward to what we do on Brooklyn. Yeah, and, you know, when it comes to Brooklyn as well, I mean, like you just said, they've been a surprise team this year. They haven't been that bad. They've been a decent team. You know, obviously their record isn't all that good, but they, they haven't been horrible. So the Knicks can't necessarily just, you know, lay their foot down and expect them to just cakewalk their way into another victory. I mean, they were just in a dogfight with the Bulls, a team that's not supposed to be that good, it's a team that's ready to trade away Zach Levine and, and Nikola Vucevic. So... I just need to see consistency, but while we're on the topic of consistency, I want to talk about Mikael Bridges because I don't think he's been very consistent at all on either end of the floor. You know, there, there's been his numbers overall in the season, they look fine, you know, about 15 points per game, decent efficiency, whatever. But his defense has taken a massive step back, and it's really, really concerning to me. It is. You know, there, there's been a couple games where he's looked alright on defense, but last night, he was horrible on defense. I'm sorry. He was getting absolutely cooked by Zach Levine left and right. And the entire time I was wondering why OG Ananobi wasn't guarding him. Now I understand you want OG helping down low because he's a bigger body. He's a guy that can help on the boards and help on the interior. I get that part. But you can't just keep letting Bridges get fried by Levine left and right. That's why they went down by 22 in the first place and had to play catch up. I mean, you can't do that every game. You can't find yourself in a hole and have to come out of it every single time because nine times out of ten, you don't make the comeback. Nine times out of ten, you'll end it. Maybe you will make the comeback, but you won't finish it. It doesn't happen that often. There's a reason why huge comebacks make the news, make the media a lot, because it doesn't happen every time, right? So just what I really want to see, though, is just better play from Bridges, and I really don't think that's much for me to ask for considering that we gave up five first-round picks for this guy. Five first-round picks, yes, that is a massive overpay. We understood that when it was first made. But we also know that what he's capable of and that when, when he is playing at his best, he's a high-impact player. But right now, he has not been a high-impact player. He's been a negative on the floor. He just, he, I'm just being honest, he has. And it's, just, it's, it's alarming to me because I really want to see him just play better defense. I don't really care if he's scoring 14 or 16 points a night. I don't care. We have two all-NBA-level scorers on the floor in Brunson and Towns. So I don't really care about how many points Bridges is scoring. I need him to play better defense. That's why we have him out there for the defense. And right now, we're not getting any of that out of him. And it's concerning because now, now we're having stretches where he's not on the floor in closing minutes and instead Deuce McBride is out there because we, we, we're, we're lacking the defense from him. It's concerning. And, you know, as you said, too, Carlton Towns has been the most consistent Nick. I'd have to agree with it now. Before yesterday, though, I, I said OG Ananobi was arguably the most consistent Nick before last night. Obviously, OG had kind of a rough night against Chicago, so maybe I can't really say, sit here and say that anymore. But be, before that, he was the one that was actually providing the defense, and he was doing his thing offensively. You know, he's taken a step forward yeah. offensively this season. He's had 20 points in four of his last six or seven games. You know, he had the 25-point game against uh, against uh, Philadelphia and or, or Indiana, one of those games, and another 24-point game against Philadelphia. So really just a yeah. phenom phenomenal from him so far. And he's been worth every penny. He has. Yes, the contract was a huge contract we gave him, and a lot of people viewed it as an overpay. You know, it was a $212 million contract. Yes, that is a lot of money for a guy that is typically averaging around 16 to 17 points a game for his career. I understand that. That is a lot of money. But no other player is going to provide an impact the way he does if the, for the Knicks. Okay, No other player would do that. Because right now, without him, I don't think the Knicks are 5-6. and six. They could be 3-8 three and, three and eight or 4-7. Or and seven. They very well could be if it weren't for OG Ananobi. And it's just even more alarming, too, because the guys are healthy so far. Yes, the bench is, is injured to, to hell. I mean, everyone's hurt right there. You know, you're missing Achua. You're missing Robinson. You were missing Cameron Payne for a few games. 
But the starters have been healthy. All five starters have been healthy. Yes, fatigue is probably playing a role in this little kind of skid a little bit. I, I don't doubt that at all. I mean, the guys are getting tired. I can just tell. I mean, even last night, Carl Anthony Towns was out there huffing and puffing after, you know, he's scoring bucket after bucket, which I get it, man. He's been playing all these minutes, and he's had to do all the work because, you know, the rest of the guys aren't doing their job. Again, still early in the season. I'm not panicking, but I do think that it's time that we really – ask for some better play from these guys you know you could live with it for the first five or six games because it's the start of a new season teams always do this get off the slow starts but we're 11 games in now I do think we can ask for a little bit more from these guys and I do think we need to see them step it up a notch and I know they're going to at some point I want to see it now though I do I don't want to have a repeat of last season where we're floating around 500 up until we traded for OG I don't want to have to make another drastic trade to uh, you know get us to where we want to be I think this team right now that we have can do a lot of great things. They just need to get going. They need to get their chemistry right. It's going to take time for them to build chemistry, but they need to get some chemistry. They need to spend some more time playing scrimmages in practice or something, and they just need to get it going. That's really all I can ask for. There's, a, there's, there's so many different things I could get into, but I don't want to make this episode too long, so I'm going to give you one last opportunity to kind of you know spill out your final thoughts on this before we wrap it up. Yeah, two quick things, really. Just, just that wing stop, that the wing stop, Mikhail Bridges and OG and Anobi right now, I think their roles are, like, the way they have OG and Anobi extended in offense, they kind of put themselves in a hole there. Because I remember before he got signed, or when he was talking about negotiations with the Knicks, one of his caveats in his contract was the fact that he's going to be able to have an extended role on offense. And the fact that that is the case with you bring in Towns and Bridges after that, the distribution, like I said, shot distribution on this team is just ridiculous. And I think that really factors into the lack of chemistry. It's really like getting, making sure OG gets his shots, making sure McHale, stuff like that really matters. And these things that these guys really do have, because there are incentives in contracts. You guys have to get their shots, things of that nature. And it's just very interesting to see that, how that's really making, making a glaring difference and how the offense floats. Because you can really see, you know, the miss, you know, the communication here and there. And as well as things like fatigue and the lack of depth. Those, that's my second point here. What are your expectations? You know what I mean? So, so when the Knicks finally figure it out, we're going to be, what, 15, maybe 20 games in? 20 games in, like I said, they're lacking a gear. I've said this in previous episodes. There's a gear that they will just get to, and the teams have already been on, and they'll be on another plateau by the time Christmas time comes around. The Knicks are trying to play catch-up by that point. You're having to regain your depth back. You're trying to regain your, your legs back. And things like that nature, like, man, we have to really go on a run here. I think around January, something, something has to really be solidified because I think people are losing faith. It's only 11 games in, but you have this collection of talent, and this is what they're on display with right now. 11 games in, below 500, can't play defense. And as you saw, I saw a take it yesterday, had like less than 1,000 likes. Like, people are logging out, man. People, <laughs> people are checking out 11 games in. They're like, this is like, this is not what we, what we expected to see. And I think they should really be, you know, figuring out really how to, you know, compile these, really have a real chemistry with this uh, starting five, because that's really what it's all about, in my opinion. And the wing stop duo was just, if they don't figure that out, as far as how you guys can maximize defense and then translate that to offense, man, that's going to be putting us in a bind the whole entire season. So that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, I think it really does start with those two do it with that two uh, those two players on defense because those are your two best defenders on paper. So you're supposed to get more out of those guys. You know, we lose rim protection with Towns, but I do think if those guys play better on the perimeter, then there's less opportunity. There's less chances for teams to expose Towns down low. I think it's really that simple. So you just got to play better defense. That's really where I need to see the most consistency because this team has offense. You know, this team has been scoring at a high rate. I mean, last night, 123 points against the Bulls, despite being down by 22, you know, firing up that ferocious comeback, really, you know, down 22, and then all of a sudden up three in an eye blink. This team can score at a very quick rate, you know, at a very high level, and they can just shoot you out of the game. They really can. not But you can't be playing catch-up. And as you said, too, you know, you want to get going now because you don't want to be around Christmas time playing catch-up, and you don't want to be at a spot where you're just now figuring things out while these other teams have been figuring it out. I mean, look at the Cavaliers. You know, the Cavaliers, I, I, I still don't believe the Cavaliers are anything serious this year, but I also have to acknowledge that they are 13-0 and right now because that team has played together for a while. You know, that team has been together for a few years now. They know how they all play, and they're rolling right now. They're 13-0. and It's one of the best records to start a season ever. So, you know, when it comes down to that, then I know the Knicks are capable of doing great things, but I, I'm kind of getting tired of these, like, you know, oh, they get going later in the season. Again, I would rather be playing well later in the season than at the start, you know, if, if I had to pick one. But at the same time, I like to see them play well all throughout because that's what good teams do. 
they play well all throughout. Yes, there's going to be times where you have struggles. There's going to be times where you slide. Knicks have seemed to hit that right now, and I guess it's better that they're hitting it at this point in the season rather than in March. But still, I, I just want to see better play. I don't think that's really too much for me to ask. That's really all I got to say, though, so I do think this is a good place to uh, wrap the episode up. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, guys. Let us know what you think about the, the Knicks start to the season and their recent games in the comment section below because we would love to hear about it. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms. We're on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, of course, this YouTube page that you are watching the video on. You can follow our personal Twitter accounts there above our heads. And we will see you guys in the next episode of Fireside Knicks. Peace out.